Hello and welcome to another episode of the Solo Collective podcast. My name is Matt Saunders and I'm your host. I work as a coach to freelancers and creative agency owners. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about a topic that is really close to my heart. And it is the topic of limiting beliefs. Now, if you've read anything about coaching, about mindsets, about beliefs, you will understand that the beliefs that we hold about ourselves, about our industry, about our skill sets and about other people, you will understand how that affects the actions that we take in the world, which go on to impact the results that we get. And so in this episode, I'm going to talk you through some of my challenges with my own belief system and talk about the way that I used to think that held me back when I was building my last business, my website development business. So just before I go any further, it's probably worth saying that I've been coaching full time for over two years now. I am certified with various different coaching training companies. I have been coached one-on-one. -on -one. I've been part of group training programs, and I've also run countless sessions now with my own one-on-one -on -one clients and various different groups. I'm also incredibly well-read on the subject of mindset, on the subject of psychology. And so marrying all of this with my own personal experience, I feel pretty well qualified to share some advice on this particular subject of limiting beliefs. So I want to go back to, I think it was 2018, when I had been a web developer for over 10 years professionally, and I never really found my groove up until 2018 when I decided to stop what I was doing and then niche down. And I chose to work with small charities. So I threw up a landing page online and I started driving traffic to that page. And sure enough, charities saw that. They obviously found that the messaging on there resonated with them. They reached out to me and I built a business very, very rapidly off this, off this model. I've talked about this in other podcasts and on my blog. You can go read about my story and my experience of niching down. Um, there's a lot of learnings there. But one thing that came up for me during this time of pretty rapid growth was my own limiting beliefs. So I I didn't recognize this at the time. This is one of the things that really kind of gets you with limiting beliefs, because unless you are deeply self-aware or have a coach or a mentor or somebody who's kind of overseeing your day-to-day -day actions within your business, unless you have those mechanisms in place, you're not necessarily going to be able to see your own thinking because something like 80 to 90% of our actions are carried out on the basis of our subconscious thought. That is the beliefs that we have about whatever activity we're engaged in. And so only about 10% of what we do is conscious. I find that absolutely fascinating in itself. That means that the way that we show up, the way that we present ourselves and the actions that we take, we don't know where they're coming from. It's automatic. And this is a, rem this is a remarkable function of the brain. The brain has, over the years that it's been alive, has absorbed information and knowledge from past experiences, from society, from things that people and our parents and, you know, our teachers at school have taught us. We've kind of consolidated all of that and it goes into the subconscious mind. And that is what affects the way that we show up. And it wasn't until at least a year into this website development business that I was building that I realized I had some pretty negative limiting beliefs that were really, really holding me back. If you work in the creative profession, or even if you don't, if you're a business owner who works alone, you will certainly have your own limiting beliefs. And some of the ones that I'm going to share with you now are probably present in your own mindset. So it wasn't until at least a year into my business when I had quite a few clients on the board, I was making some good money. I started to ask myself, where am I holding myself back? I was actually on an accelerator program at this time. So I did have access to a coach and just those conversations being given that space to speak aloud really, really helped me to kind of see my own thinking, if you like. And it was insane what was revealed to myself about myself that I didn't even know. So 
bear in mind, I was selling websites. I was selling websites to my clients, to my charity clients. And some of the unconscious trains of thought that were floating around in my head this entire time were things like, nobody pays much for websites these days, or everybody already creates their own websites, or the web design industry is so crowded, or clients don't understand what I do, so they're never going to pay much for it. And probably the biggest killer of all was, oh, everybody already has a website anyway. So can you imagine the damage that these trains of unconscious thought were having on the way that I positioned myself, presented myself, on the way that I quoted for my work, you know, all of this shows up in your pricing and your proposal process. It shows up in the way that you speak to prospects on a call. You know, if you if you have these deeply held beliefs that clients don't value what you do or that they could go and get it cheaper elsewhere and, you know, they may just go and DIY their own website, how damaging is this going to be for you as someone who's trying to sell this service? So what I had to do was, first of all, become aware of those trains of thought. And then I had to kind of understand how it was, how they were impacting me, how they were impacting the growth of my business, because they were, they're called limiting beliefs for a reason, because they severely hamper our progress towards the goals that we set for ourselves. So once you become aware of them, you can then choose to develop a more productive and helpful belief. You know, we should never underestimate the power of the mind and of our own thinking. You know, there's that Henry Ford quote, isn't there, that says, whether you think you can or can't, either way you're right. And I remember hearing that years ago when I was younger and I just kind of like scoffed at it and, and, and sort of moved on. But it is so incredibly true because the uncomfortable truth is, is that your limiting beliefs and your empowering beliefs are both true and false at the same time. Let me give you an example of that so you can see where I'm coming from. If I were to take the limiting belief that nobody will pay very much money for a website, I start to think about the impact of that. Well, what does that mean? That means that it means I'm not going to charge much. I'm not going to quote much. And because of that, I'm probably not going to put a lot of effort into my proposal because I think that it's not really going to be worth it anyway. And then even when a client does come through and they say, yes, we'd like to go ahead, I'm going to start feeling resentful towards them for not charging enough in the first place because I didn't believe they were going to pay much anyway. So you can see how this limiting belief just in isolation is bad enough, but then how it begins to snowball and affect the whole process. It's really not a clever way to run a business. So the limiting belief is nobody will pay that much for a website. Now, you could say to me, there is some truth in that. Some people won't pay much for a website. Some people don't even want a free website. You can't give it away. And that's fair enough. But that's not the way that we want to be thinking when we're trying to sell websites or anything else. When we're in business trying to make things happen, we don't want to give air to these negative thoughts, even if there's a nugget of truth in all of them. So we want to reframe that into a more positive statement, a positive belief that we can develop within ourselves and repeat uh, that's going to change the internal narrative, change the subconscious beliefs, and then ultimately change the behavior and the actions that we take. So I reframed this one into people will pay whatever a project is worth to them. People will pay whatever a website is worth to them. So I've gone from, oh, nobody's going to pay much for a website to people will pay whatever it is worth to them. And I find for me that is a much more empowering belief because it takes the pressure um, from me to kind of impress and persuade and sell and just sort of believe that, well, if somebody sees value in this, then they're going to pay for it. Okay. The other belief that I had was everybody creates their own websites these days anyway. And again, that's partly true. People are DIYing their websites all the time. Look at Squarespace, look at Wix, you know, in these systems, they do a pretty good job and that's fine. But it's not very helpful to think that way if you are in the business of selling websites. So I reframed this limiting belief into a much more empowering one that said some people create their own websites, but to get real results, you need to invest in a professional. Now, again, that is both true and not true. You could be a chiropractor or a plumber and still develop your skills and knowledge in the areas of building a website and digital marketing and absolutely be fine on your own. But 
also, most people won't do that. So they need to come to a professional. That's me. That is somebody selling the website, selling the marketing. So if they want to get real results, they've got to make those investments. I could choose to tell myself that everybody creates their own websites, or I could choose to tell myself that some people create their own websites, but to get real results, they'll have to come to me to invest in a professional. So after listening to this podcast episode, what I want you to do is pull out a sheet of paper, divide it into two columns, write on the left side, limiting belief, and write on the right-hand side, positive belief. And I want you to sit down and just quieten your mind for a moment and just think about all of the ways that you are holding yourself back in your business. What are the beliefs that you hold that are driving your behavior and your actions? I promise you there are limiting beliefs in there. I haven't got all of mine sorted right now and I probably never will because as I continue to grow, more limiting beliefs are going to start showing up and I got to develop this awareness, keep developing the awareness to see them when they do crop up so that I can challenge them and replace them with a more positive belief. Because as I said earlier, most of our behavior is driven by unconscious thought. We can't get away from that. It's the way that the brain works. So we might as well start consciously telling ourselves positive things over and over and over and over and over again so that our subconscious mind starts to believe that rather than the current limiting negative beliefs that are currently in there. So I really encourage you to engage in this exercise and it's not a one and done process. This is something you want to revisit every few months. Whenever you feel like you're hitting a glass ceiling in your business or whenever you feel lost, there are reasons why. And that is because your subconscious mind, which makes up the vast bulk of our behavior and the actions that we take, that's because there's something going on in there that's keeping you where you are. You know, growth is an endless journey and you've gotten to where you are, which is great. But if you want to keep moving, there's a reason why you've stopped. And if you want to keep moving, you've got to explore the thinking behind where you currently are and figure out what it is that's keeping you there. It will be limiting beliefs. Find the limiting beliefs, replace them with something more positive, repeat it to yourself and watch the actions that you take slowly begin to change as your mindset shifts to something more productive and positive for you. So I hope that this episode was helpful. It is a topic that has been written about and talked about for so many years now. It's a very hot topic at the moment. A lot of people out there think that mindset is a lot of rubbish and that it's all about strategy. And I promise you it isn't. Strategy is such a small part of building a successful business because if there was a strategy that worked, uh, just one strategy, we'd all just follow that, wouldn't we? So it's not about the strategy. It's about all the energy behind it. And a lot of that energy is coming from your subconscious thought. So if you enjoyed this episode, please let me know. You can find me on LinkedIn, send me a message on there. My name's Matt Saunders. And if you're looking for some extra support in your business, it might be worth checking out the Solo Collective community. You can find that at mattsaunders.uk slash membership. It's an online platform and we meet every week on Zoom to talk through our business challenges, share our wins and learn and grow together. And lastly, if you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review this podcast on whatever platform you're listening to it on. And thank you very much for listening. I will see you next time.